What's happening, y'all? This is Mike D with Black Fathers Now, where we're bringing the village to the brothers. Every couple of weeks, you can look forward to a quick inspirational message or a thought-provoking guest with knowledge and wisdom all geared towards helping you be the best father that you can be. We're bringing the village to you. Now is your turn to do something with what you learn. All right, y'all. Let's go. Fellas, what's poppin'? This is Mike D with Black Fathers Now. And uh, today is a quick message. And um, I want you to think about now what? You know, the title is Black Fathers Now, right? Like, we don't have the luxury of waiting. We have to be black fathers now. But looking at the landscape of what's going on and, um, you know, the environment politically and all the race relation stuff and, uh, you know, even like, you know, something is, um, you know, is as hot as the Colin Kaepernick situation with the NFL. I mean, now is the time. We don't have the luxury of waiting anymore. Now, granted, we have to be patient in life. I agree with that. I am 100 percent about being patient. And I live by the mantra of more dreams are killed by impatience than failure. So you have to be patient, but you also have to be in the moment and understand that some things require you to do now and not wait until later. Waiting until later and being patient are two different things. Being patient is understanding that I'm allowing the process to play out, right? I'm still doing my part. I'm doing what I have to do right now, but I'm also patient in regards to the result. That doesn't mean that I'm not taking action, right? Being patient is allowing the result to play out, not delaying your taking action. That's a difference. That's a difference. You know, delaying your action might be a symptom of being lazy, but being patient does not mean that you're not taking action. That just means from a spiritual perspective or from a mindset perspective, from a mentality, you are allowing things to play out in the right way. So, but as black fathers and as black men, you know, I ask the question, you know, now what? Like, now what do we do, right? I mean, when you see the things that pop off in the news, when you hear political commentary, when you hear you know, various folks with their opinions on the state of black America or the state of black men or, you know, the state of relations, you know, in regards to race, especially here in America. I know there's some listeners, you know, outside of the country, but we're talking specifically here in America, but you can probably take this and extrapolate it to other places around the world. But now what? Like, I mean, We know what's going on and you can continue to restate the obvious. You can continue to reemphasize what's going on. We can continue to watch the same thing play out over and over and over and over again. And truthfully, I can get pissed off about it. Truthfully, I can get frustrated and become scared and skittish. But how is that going to serve me? Because at the end of the day, being scared being pissed off, being frustrated and being skittish, living a life in which I'm constantly looking over my shoulder is really not going to serve me or anybody that I impact. So to that point, we have to understand that, yes, there are forces at work that might not have your best interest at heart. Right now, what? All right. There might be a scenario in which there are demographics of people who are scared of you just because of who you are. Okay, now what? There might be folks who really do not have your best interest at heart and really want you to not succeed. They want you to fail in life. Okay, now what? You know what I'm saying? It's just like we we understand, we're stating the obvious. We know that those forces are out there, right? So now what? Like, what do you do? And, um, you know, and, and I think about myself. I'm 37 year old, 37 years old, married you know, to a beautiful wife with a six-year-old little girl and a four-year-old little boy, I think about myself, but more importantly, I think about my family. I think about my God kids, my God sons, my, my niece and my nephew and my cousins and, you know, the little folks that I, I encounter and touch. I mean, I, I stop and I think about all of those folks 
And I'm just like, how does it benefit them for me to operate in this I'm so scared mentality? How does it benefit them for me to walk around skittish and, you know, uh, operate in a way that, you know, that, I, that I'm just I'm pissed off all the time? How does that benefit them? And if I'm really honest about it, it doesn't. It doesn't. We cannot change how other people feel. You cannot change other people's actions. You can't even change, you know, how other people are, you know, their their intentions. You can't change any of that. All that you have control over is how you act and react to things that happen. That's the only thing that you have control over. So now what? And for me, when I think about my self, but more so when I think about specifically my son, because he's going to grow up, grow up into a black man. Right. Right now, he's a four year old little boy that's cute. But five, six, seven years from now, that cuteness wears away and he's just a young black man and he becomes a threat to some. And um, and he, he just has to understand that. But I don't want him living life scared, skittish and pissed off either. So to me, it's like, what can we do now? What now? What we have to think about who all we can help. We need to figure out a way to just help all that we can. We need to figure out a way to inspire all that are open to being inspired. We ha- inspired. We have to figure out a way to teach all those who are open to be taught. We have to lead with love first. Like I said, I can't operate being skittish and scared. I can't operate, you know, being pissed off and, you know, just being angry at the world. I have to figure out a way how to lead with love first. And I have to teach my son these things. I have to operate that way because he's watching me. If he watches me and sees me scrolling through videos 24 seven or being constantly pissed off at the world or being constantly pissed off at circumstances, how is he going to then grow up and understand how to react to things, right? But then we also have to get to a place where we build and create so that we have opportunities so that we can thrive and, you know, be the best versions of ourselves. So for me, that's when I think about creating entrepreneurial opportunities or if not entrepreneurial, figuring out work or partnership opportunities where you are in the best position for you to thrive and present the best version of yourself to the world. And if you're currently in a situation in which you're not you know, afforded the opportunity to present the best version of yourself to the world, or you're not presented an opportunity in which you can thrive, you need to bounce. You need to change something up. And, um, but then also you want to do that so that you can leave a solid legacy. And a legacy doesn't always mean money. A legacy a lot of times is, you know, principle or, you know, uh, how to do things or, you know, a legacy of, you know, perspective that can pass down so that the next generation, my son, and then, you know, if my daughter has a son or whatever, you know, her sons or my son's sons, I mean, we pass these things down because as black men, as black fathers, as potential black fathers in years to come, we have to have the right mindset and the right, you know, way of operating that does not come off as being skittish, scared, Or looking over our shoulder 24-7. Because at the end of the day, how productive are we going to be? What type of impact are we going to have if we live a life being scared? (laughs) You know what I'm saying? We can't do that, right? And so to that point, you know, we have to understand that there are demographics of people who have it out for you. And guess what? That's okay. That's okay. I'm not going to spend my time and energy focused on them. I'm thinking about where are the opportunities? Going back to what I mentioned before, where are the folks that are open to being inspired, right? I'm going to inspire them. Where are the folks who are open to being taught? I'm going to teach them. You know what I'm saying? Like, we have to think about that. Like, who can I help? How can I give? How can I build? Where are the opportunities for me to build and thrive, to create opportunities for others, to build enormous wealth so that you can give, you know, in huge chunks of money and not nickel and dime? I mean, where are the opportunities for the best version of myself to be present? Those are the things that I'm looking for. Yes, we can look at the challenges and we can need to address the challenges. 
But the flip side of that is we also need to spend most of our time seeking out and focusing on the opportunities because it don't serve nobody for me to live a life that's scurred, skittish. I can't, I mean, you know, I've said this before on various social media posts, but, you know, being a black father is, you know, you can't be no punk. You know, no punks allowed. I mean, that's being 100, right? And then from a spiritual perspective, if you look at this, you know, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world, right? And that's from my spiritual perspective. That's from my, you know, my belief in God, you know, in the sense that, you know, he created all of us or he created me. And so to that point, when I think about me specifically, I'm in this world, but I'm not of this world. So if I'm not of this world, why do I let the world continuously impact my mindset and cause me to live a life that's fearful right it now that i mean that's being real so to that point i want all of us and i want to challenge all of you fellas all the brothers out there to not live a life that's scared because for one no punks allowed right we we can't living a life that's scared living a life that you know always constantly looking over our shoulder now granted there are going to be situations that are not going to be favorable that's life but that doesn't mean that every day i'm going to approach it like it's going to be not favorable all right so i'm going to challenge you man i'm going to challenge every brother listening to this every father out there to live a life just not scared we can't we cannot afford to live a life that's scared and skittish and um because we can't punk out man the next generation is depending on us so we got to do it fellas i mean we just got to do it. We have to address the issues at hand. Yes. Are things messed up at times? Yes. But we still can't live a life that w- that doesn't mean we can't live a life that we don't seek out and focus on opportunities. And so uh, to that point, man, I mean, we just got to do it, man. We got to create it. We got to thrive. We got to build. We got to help each other. We got to inspire each other. We got to teach each other. We got to motivate each other. We got to be that shoulder for another brother to cry on or come to when stuff gets tough because you can't understand it. We got to do all of that. But we also have to build. We also have to live a life that we in which we thrive, because when we thrive, our kids see us thriving and then they get it in their mind that they're supposed to thrive. Not that thriving is only for a, a small group of people. We got to create this critical mass of thriving, not just surviving, but thriving. Now, you define what thrive means in your life, but we have to create this critical mass in which we all start thriving and living this 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 opportunity centered mindset or this opportunity centered life. This, you know, this being filled with hope, because if not, it's going to be this whole hum you know, we're not going to do anything, woe is us mentality, and that stuff's going to get passed on, and I refuse to pass that on to my children. We're talking about black men, so to my son, I'm talking specifically, but to both of my children, I I refuse to pass on this ho-hum mentality of woe is us, we ain't got nothing, everybody's against us. They might be, so what? If you look through our history, and see what we've overcome, and what we've come through, and we still here? Come on, man. All right, y'all. Well, this was just a little had-to-get-off-my-chest moment. and um, But yeah, most definitely, y'all follow Black Fathers Now on all social media platforms. Subscribe via iTunes, Stitcher, or um, Google Play, iHeartRadio, whatever. But leave us some ratings, man. Leave us some ratings, leave us some comments, and share this with fellow fathers man we got to create this critical mass of strong black fatherhood man because our kids our wives our communities are depending on it we got to step up man we can't be scared no punks allowed we can't be scared we got to make this thing happen and um this is brought to you by blackfamilyapparel.com as well visit black family apparel and Grab some dope apparel that um that celebrates the nuances of the black family. So definitely grab it, man. Some really cool stuff there. And wear it with pride and, you know, and let folks know about it. Because at the end of the day, we have to do our part to help rewrite the narrative of what the black family is all about. So um, I guess until next time, y'all, be blessed, well, and wise. And I'll holler at you. Peace. 
Yo, fellas, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And always, always, always visit blackfathersnow.com as well as follow Black Fathers Now on virtually every social media platform you can think of. Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, everywhere. Just follow us and uh, and engage with us, man. Look forward to hearing from you. And uh, I guess until next time, I'll holler at you. Peace.